next video. Today we're going to meet Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi. And Ron has created an off-grid cabin on wheels. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's amazing what he's done here. And so, tell us about your trailer. Well, it's more of a plan B. We live in a house over here and uh, I wanted something to uh, have if the power goes out or if I decide to go on a vacation and uh, stay off grid somewhere. So you set this up, in, you're in North Carolina. Right. And it's hot. It's really hot and humid. And humid. Mainly humid. That's a bad combination. No, yeah it is. So your main goal then was to create off-grid cabin on wheels is to have solar power to run air conditioning. That's exactly right. And you've done that. I, I've been doing that. Yes, I good, am. Good. So tell us how you can run an off-grid cabin on wheels off of uh, solar power. Well, you need a whole lot of panels and a whole lot of batteries. And uh, I'm running a, a small air conditioner. I took the big one off the top. Got a 5,000 BTU air conditioner in the, that's uh, fit perfect in the bathroom window in the back. I've ducted that to come up through the cabinets and, and back into the living space so that it's uh, cooling the living space and not cooling the bathroom. And uh, run it off of a 1500 watt inverter. Got uh, close to a thousand watts of solar panels. Almost a thousand watts. And I'm adding. Adding. Adding more. I'd like to have about 1,200. And uh, I've got 450 amp hours of batteries. And I wouldn't mind adding a few more batteries to this mix. But uh, when the sun goes down, I'm uh, on a generator. So I can run an air conditioner when the sun's shining. You'd really need a lot of batteries to go very far overnight once the sun's down. Right. Uh, I do have a a fridge in there that is uh, a 12 volt fridge that I will move outside and uh, I will run that to make ice. So uh, I can always take a jug or two of ice, put it in front of a fan and uh, cool the place off uh, in the evenings when the sun's gone down. So uh, you have uh, four panels here on the side. Right. And uh, I've got one inside that, that will fill in here. Once this is deployed and in position, I have another panel that fits in here. Okay. And how many panels do you have on the roof? One, two, three? I've four. got uh, three up front, two in the back. So I've got uh, five 100 watt energy. And I'm going to add another one back over here in kind of a difficult area, but I am going to have a total of six watts on the roof and, uh, and these are hundreds also no these are like 86 I believe oh. uh, it took me a while to find these because I was shopping for just the right size now how, how long is your trailer it's a uh, 19 foot boy it's a small trailer right to get all this solar on it. I uh, tried to get the smallest trailer I could get that still had two axles and I figured I could find a way to put enough solar panels on it on the trailer that size. I've got a, uh, a 95 Chevy Silverado with a 350 motor in it. Uh, and what year, what is the, uh, the travel trailer? This is a 1990. Coachman or? Uh, uh, Terry. Terry. Yeah. It seems really well made. It's very well made. Very well made. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with it. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, seems like it's better made than most of the new ones are. Well, uh, it's got really thick aluminum and really thick uh, plywood on the inside. Uh, so you want to <laughs> show us how you've mounted the panels and how you deploy them? <clears throat> yeah. Well, these uh, these panels on the top uh, are man mounted to a pipe. I just took an uh, inch and a half piece of uh, ABS black pipe. If I had it to do over, I'd use the uh, conduit pipe, the gray conduit pipe, because it, uh, it doesn't turn as brittle in the sun. But every place there's a rib up here, I, I put a bracket and, uh, and... And screwed into the rib? And screwed into the rib, every 16 inches on center. Uh, I've got 
got it screwed in good and then then I attached these panels I, I used some brackets that I made that is a, a mobile home tie down and I take and cut them with a, a big pair of tin snips drill them out bend them into shape and they make excellent brackets and so I just pretty much used what I had hanging around here all this stuff is just stuff I had sitting here that I made work uh, but anyway I've got uh, so they easily tilt to whatever angle you want right yeah there's uh, you can get up there and tilt them but I, I pretty much would leave them this way because uh, I always get enough su sun in the winter time it's all about getting enough sun in the summertime to right. run the air conditioner so most people are pretty good about figuring out how to put them on top right but uh, hmm. my idea was I wanted to create shade and I wanted more solar panels here. Right. Now one of the disadvantages that, that I have is when I pull into a spot, if I do, it's got to face south. Because it's pretty much predetermined that, that this has got to face south for everything to work. Right. At least in the summertime because you need all the power you can get off the sun to run these air conditioners. But anyway, what I did is I took the, uh, the fabric cut it off and then I mounted this secure this this piece here typically leans out like that and the tube rolls with it and you unroll your your fabric on him well my situation is is I've mounted that secure so this doesn't move this stays put but what happens is I can undo uh, these straps here and then I can swing these panels up. I've got it. I've got them secured here for travel. I use. Okay, now that swings free right there. system now that's free so there's a latch up here these tubes are spring loaded this this uh, tube is, is I've, I've cocked it this way a little bit already and so it already has a tendency to want to go that way and what I want to do is swing these around so these are straight up I'm going to do that in two two steps I'm going to swing this around here and that'll allow me to swing the panels up. Once I get the panels up here, then I'll go ahead and swing it on up the rest of the way. So to do that, I loosen this thing here. And now I can take these homemade jacks here. What I did is take a piece of conduit took a skill saw with a metal blade and cut it in a couple of places and actually one two three four slits I went through one way turned it over and went through the other way so now I can pull these in and out and wherever I want I can tighten this and this is like the two or three dollar uh, telescoping support pole and I just used some uh, pipe hanging material really cheap uh, stuff you buy in a roll and just cut it off and you can use that to use that to uh, attach to this and then to lock it in place so it don't go nowhere you got another hose clamp right there so now this can go like that
And that's to keep them from slipping off? That's correct. So they can't, now they can't come off. They no can't go what. anywhere now. Yeah. Yep, they're solid. So you could get a wind and a little flapping and you'll be fine. That's the idea. I just... You see how much more shade I'm getting now? Yeah, you sure are. That makes a world of difference as far as keeping this thing cool. And you have nothing invested in, in this other than the panels. This is just conduit and... Uh, yeah, and hose I mean, clamps. We're talking 10, 20 bucks worth of conduit, hose clamps. Now you could uh, you could go and buy a painter's pole for 30 bucks, but instead, why not? Why not do this? Yeah, it takes a little longer. Well, you just work it up until you have it as high as you wanted. It. That's right. Well, yeah, to be able to do it right. Okay, I can slide into that, clamp that, and take another one, you know, take one that's long enough, and go across, and then, so this is all tied together here, the conduit that goes in there and goes in there. And, and you then, could add another one over the door. I do, I have, I have a smaller one that uh, is difficult to, to find perfect sizes for this. I think these are 86 watt panels. And the one I got for filling in between, I believe is like a 65 watt panel. Took me a while of shopping to get, get all the dimensions so that I, you know, I can get in and out of the door when they're down. Right, since the key for thing is, since you wanted air conditioning, that the panels fit just perfectly to fill that whole area. I want shade uh, and yeah, and, and all the shade that, that I'm gaining, I wanted with solar panels. Right. Uh, I've added about 80 pounds. I believe I'm okay. I've got uh, connectors here ready to plug in the one that fits in between here. And then I've got, got stakes. So I'll drive that in the ground and clamp that good. So it ain't going to go up, and, and the wind ain't going to take it away there. I hope it inspires other people to do something similar, because I really like the way, the way it works. Uh, I, I'm sure for different trailers it's going to be different. And they're just uh, held on. With more of these hose clamps, all these are just a hose clamp here, and then behind the hose clamp is a piece of that uh, mobile home tie-down strap I cut about that long. I slid up in behind the solar panel and then uh, cinched it down with a hose clamp. So that's how I've attached these panels here. That gives me another about 450 watts of uh, on these side, side panels on these side panels yeah I'd like to put another 100 watt panel here to shade the air conditioner and then I'd like to get a, a flexible panel for up front for that awning up there and just attach it right to the awning so I'm um, you know we're looking probably uh, maybe 1300 watts when I get done. That's that's amazing out of a 19 foot trailer and and look at all the shade it provides right and and you If without this shade it wouldn't be possible to run this little air conditioner and cool the thing right But if you start throwing up shade cloth Then that makes it all the better it does and then if you're looking for a campsite You're looking for a sunny site and there's lots of them available because everybody wants under the trees well, so why don't we take a look around now? Okay.